You're watching another Nerd Stalker interview. Okay, I think we're live. So anyway, uh, good morning. Uh, welcome to another Nerd Stalker interview. Uh, good morning. This is Greg Gloria, aka Social Greg, on Twitter for the Nerd Stalker Media Network. Uh, today I'm pleased to talk with Elliot Sun, uh, the CEO and of the startup called Cloudless, uh, live uh, from Berkeley here on Google Plus Hangouts. Uh, you know, we interviewed Elliot last month, and as we discussed his uh, cloudless product, and today we talked with Elliot on the future of mobile and the cloud for 2014. And uh, yeah, as you know, the mobile and the cloud are almost synonymous, and we'd like to get his take on this because, you know, mobile really needs a cloud, and the cloud needs to support mobile. So um, let's talk a little bit about Elliot. Uh, Elliot has been a serial entrepreneur for two startups, uh, and, and two startups under his belt, and he's the CEO of Cloudless, uh, a platform simplifying email to the cloud. And uh, you should check that out at the end. We'll, we'll give you the links to all that. And uh, Elliot received his bachelor's from UC Berkeley in mathematics and economics, so he's pretty smart. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, good morning, Elliot. I had to throw that one in. <laughs> I like to pretend to be smart. So if, uh... okay. <laughs> humble, too, as you can know. So uh, thanks for joining us here on uh, Nerd Soccer Live from Berkeley, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, so, you know, you know, Everyone's talking about trends, so we might as well jump on a little bit of that bandwagon. But this one's going to be a little bit different. We'll talk about uh, you know mobile trends as they relate to the cloud and, and vice versa. So so let's start with the uh, 2014 mobile trends for consumers. So what what do you see happening um, this year for them? Yeah, um, I think for I don't even know maybe the past five years everyone's been talking about how. Uh, Smartphone penetration was going to be huge, and smartphone growth is going to be huge the next year. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is the year where it actually starts tapering off. <laughs> mm. And so the reason why I say that is um, I think there's several signals in the market. Uh, I mean, Apple was probably one of the biggest holdouts in producing an affordable consumer phone, uh, and they recently just released uh, a whole set of mm. iPhone 5Cs, I believe. Um, which are yes. which are meant for the mass market, right? So I, I think um, Android did a really good job getting uh, penetration there, and now with Apple in the game, um, I think we're going to start to see some saturation. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think one of the interesting things that's going to happen um, is, is perhaps the peripherals around the devices are going to help drive engagement to them. Because I mean, if you look at smartphones right now, a lot of the form factors are. Uh, becoming pretty similar, right? You expect the same specifications. You want like the same big screens. Um, so what's really going to differentiate? And, and you already see some companies like Samsung uh, is a great one um, that are starting to produce some peripherals that work alongside your um, mm. your mobile devices, right? Like yeah. the, the Samsung yeah. Galaxy 4 Watch. Um, I don't know if wearables are going to be a really big thing in 2014. Um, mm. I think amongst like us nerds, they're going to be huge. Um, so in the Bay Area, definitely, you're going to see like the guys with the Google Glasses, the smartwatches. Um, but I think for the bigger markets, uh, wearables are still too much of a culture shock, I think, where it'll take some time for them to be adopted um, more widely. Well, you know, it's interesting. I, I thought I, When you just said, kind of struck, struck a bell in my mind about, you know, for the longest time, after actually after smartphones came on board, I've seen a trend of people stop wearing watches, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? Because guess what? I could just see my phone and I get the time, right? Mm -hmm. and, and now they're trying to reintroduce the watch as another way of kind of like, <laughs> like you said, connecting to your smartphone, which I, I think mm -hmm. I agree with you. I think connectivity is very important. Um, for a lot of people, but I I think it's years off for the for the masses. I mean, mm -hmm. here in uh, SF New Tech, I think yeah, you'll see everyone with Pebbles and, and whatever <laughs> else running around the Samsungs, yep. running around, yep. you know. So so anyway, no, that was good. I I, I appreciate that. I think yeah, uh, yeah if you want to continue it, I, that's just something I just thought about when you were talking about. Oh yeah, I mean I. I'm I'm definitely guilty of the uh, the wearables craze. Uh, I mean that stuff is just so interesting, right? But I, I think I, I own a Pebble myself, and I think in practice um, there are a lot of really cool things that I think they could they could do with the platform. Um, but it's it's still a little rough around the edges. There's uh, there's a few things that are desired that it doesn't currently have. Uh, and like you mentioned, when smartphones are they're so easy to access, right? So it's a mini computer in your pocket, and it's been that way for years now. Um, and you can just pull it out, check the time. It really replaces a lot of different things. Right. Um, 
one of one of the uh, so I guess connecting mobile to to cloud now. I think one of the interesting things that's going to happen uh, is that you you really need uh, the cloud to work alongside your mobile device, right? Because mm-hmm. if you think about flipping off the the LTE on your phone, like what can you really do? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and there's a lot of apps that are really hindered by that. Um, these smartphones have come a long way, where the processing power and the storage have increased year over year, and it's going to continue. I'm pretty sure. Um, but the power in it is that it connects you to the entirety of the internet, and that mm-hmm. enables a lot of amazing things. So, cloud development and mobile development really need to happen hand in hand. Um, they both need each other. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. No, and I think that's that's why we're here talking with you. You know, <laughs> I'd like to get your take on that. But yeah, let's 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 move on to, to 2014 mobile trends for businesses. You know, I think. Uh, uh, you have a lot to say there, and you know. So, what do you see <laughs> happening there? You know. Yeah. So, unfortunately, I think that my former employer, um, <sighs> the BlackBerry company, may really start going away this year. Uh, uh, it it pains me a little to say that, but I mean, the past year has been really brutal on the company, mm. uh, and with a year full of bad news, you have to you have to think that some of their larger clients are really going to start thinking about hedging their bets with BlackBerry and, and looking at other solutions. Mm. Um, I think the the most interesting question here is who is really going to fill this enterprise void uh, that that's going to happen in mobile? Is, is it going to be Apple? Is it going to be Android? Um, I know that a lot of companies, especially here in the Bay Area, what they've done is they've, they've started provisioning both phones for, for the workplace. And I think that's really a result of bringing your own device to work. Uh, consumers mm-hmm. are bringing in their iPhones and their Android phones, and they really want to use it in the workplace. Um, so the, the IT department ends up provisioning both phones uh, for use in the company. But mm-hmm. there's going to be... Org- I mean, I've seen that a lot with uh, a lot of the more popular Silicon Valley tech companies. But, I mean, if, if you look at... Blackberry's more traditional customers, like the the finance organizations, the banks, et cetera, mm. the ones that are a little bit more hesitant about the cloud, more hesitant about <sighs> consumer technologies. Um, one of these big players is going to have to step in and play mm. the role of being that enterprise mobile um, solution that these enterprises are going to turn to as Blackberry continues its uh, continues diminishing. Now, some of these concerns, obviously, on the banking side, really come from security, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, security is going to be a, a big issue, I think, across consumers and business. Um, mm. and that's going to be a big topic in, in mobile and cloud, I think, for this year. Yeah, and I think that's... I, I know I worked for an enterprise that, you know, the, as soon as you signed up, you get a BlackBerry because it was just, you know, there was just a lot of things that were just integrated into enterprise through BlackBerry. You know, the security, mm-hmm. as we talked about earlier, there was a lot of things that just the IT professionals has got really comfortable with with BlackBerry. But, you know, with 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 that that ship uh, kind of drawing water now, it's really difficult. <laughs> and so, so you really see Apple Apple probably stepping up and trying to fill uh, that void a little bit. Huh? It, it could be Apple. It could be. Uh, there's so many different players that have the opportunity to step mm. into it. Um, mm. I, I think Apple is definitely well positioned. You can see a lot of the things they're starting to experiment with in their new phones, like the the fingerprint security. Although I, oh, I know there's a huge right. debate around that, but uh, <laughs> I, I think they're they're yeah. they're thinking along the right lines, which mm. uh, will lead them to something good. Um, yeah. but, but one thing you said about BlackBerry that's definitely true is that you, you're right. IT departments are very comfortable with the, the software that BlackBerry provides to help them with security and control over the company's data. Um, one of the interesting things that I think could actually happen is that BlackBerry splits off into their enterprise software solution side and then their mobile device side. Uh, and, and, I, and I think some of these things may actually start happening. Um, I've heard that their new CEO is refocusing on kind of mass market phones. They, they mm-hmm. have a deal now with Foxconn to produce um, cheaper phones for, for larger markets. Um, it's possible that they'll spin off their, their, um, their hardware side mm-hmm. uh, and then keep the enterprise side, which is their, their big cash generator anyways. Um, so you could see maybe one of these larger players actually purchasing the software side uh, mm-hmm. to, to build, to connect their hardware over to it. Um, which I think could be a pretty pretty powerful partnership if that wow. would happen. No, that that's true. So now we're kind of we're, we're we're linking into um, uh, business a little bit, and uh, <laughs> you know I think uh, no, I think it's really interesting what we're talking about here because I think that that 
that the the business side for mobile is really you know important as he said with the BYOD the bring your own device and mm -hmm. how I, IT groups are dealing with that and, and and you know every IT professional I talk to you know their department isn't getting bigger because of all these devices coming online <laughs> in fact mm -hmm. they're getting smaller yeah. they're telling me right <laughs> and so it's such a such a um, yeah, you know, such a big challenge. So, so yeah. anyway, let's let's move forward and 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 talk about the cloud a little bit more now. You know, let's yeah. move from business to the cloud, <laughs> and let, let's see how you know how, how do you see how um you know how the cloud will help consumers in 2014. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think there uh, there's a lot that's going to happen here, uh, and I think a lot of it will center around uh, increasingly heavy mobile usage. Um, I touched on this a little bit earlier. The, the phone factor is, has become really, really powerful in itself. It really is like having um, your own computer in your pocket that you can access whenever you like. Um, but processing power and storage aren't, aren't everything. Right? There's, a, there's a lot of stuff that needs to happen. I mean, the, the real power behind mobile devices is, is in its name. Right? It's mobile. You can take the, the phone anywhere. Um, you get a lot of context around location. You get a lot of context around... Um, people who are around you, the conversations that are happening, and, and to have that, you need to have the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the biggest things that that could happen, um, one of the biggest trends that's going to happen this year is, well, I think big data is actually going to become useful. Um, there's so much data that's been collected on users, um, like the stuff you tweet, where you tweet from, um, all this type of information is become is going to become really useful this year as the cloud becomes more powerful and people are actually starting to figure out what are the interesting things that people can do with this information uh, to provide usefulness to the end user. Um, so that kind of a computation will all be done in the cloud. Right? Companies are going to be doing this on their side and then feeding the results back into the mobile phone that the, that the consumer is going to use. Yeah, you know, that's an interesting battle that the mobile devices have is, is balancing power, um, energy, you know, uh, battery power, and computing power all at once, right? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I was on the semiconductor side, and we were always under pressure to deliver <laughs> the fastest, the lowest power chip in the world, and and sometimes, you know, physics di dictates that it, it's possible, <laughs> but it isn't always totally possible, you know. So, yeah, um, you know, and I think that's where I agree with you. The cloud is just really going to the help well it continues to help tremendously mm -hmm. um, you know because we don't want to carry laptops in our hands anymore <laughs> right? I mean, it's not mobile right like you said so yeah wow. no, I, power consumption yeah I think you touched on a really important point that the power consumption piece is a huge huge deal um, I think that's one of the biggest reasons that Apple doesn't allow you to run applications in the background right which is mm -hmm. which is one of the reasons why you do need the cloud because there, there's a lot of stuff that the app can do in the cloud. And, and not have to consume iPhone battery power and do all that processing um, on the iPhone. So it, it saves a lot of battery power. And I don't even know if uh, the iPhone battery power, ba the iPhone battery could actually sustain um, an application that's constantly processing data as it's receiving it in the background. Anyways, I think we'll see ourselves charging it several more times a day than we already are. Oh, absolutely, or constantly connected, one of the two. I, I, yeah. I know that with my device, I have it constantly connected. Um, you know, it's probably not wise from a battery standpoint, from a battery life standpoint, but uh, what everyone tells me, but it, it, it's crazy. So, so now, you know, a lot of these things now are popping up where there's these, uh, there's these apps that help you with the energy energy efficiency <laughs> of your Android. I, and Android's probably yep. more guilty than the Apple, like you said earlier. I mean, mm -hmm. Android's definitely more guilty. So I have an Android phone, <laughs> and, and they said that, uh, you know, the... There's a lot of these uh, energy, you know, battery management apps that say, "Oh, you, you might want to kill this app because it's it's running about 14% of your power and, mm -hmm. and you know all that stuff." And I, I agree with you. I think it's 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 something that just needs to get better managed. And yeah. I think would apps still do that. So, so anyway, if you haven't. Uh, if you just joined us, uh, we're talking with Elliot Sun, the CEO of Cloudless, and uh, about mobile and cloud trends uh, for 2014. So, let, let, let's let's go to the last one. To see how, um, and you know, this is kind of a favorite of yours. I know that talk about, uh, you know, about the 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 cloud trends for businesses and what that means for 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's a couple. Uh, one we kind of touched on a little while ago, which is security. Um, mm -hmm. This is going to be, 
I think with everything that's happened this past year in security, whether it was uh, a breach in security, which uh, a lot of popular services had, I think Snapchat being the most recent one, um, and also uh, all this, uh, the idea that the NSA is kind of peeking into, and that's that's a massive topic that we could probably have an entire uh, conversation about, but yes, yes. Um, people are definitely conscious about it. And I, and I think this is the year where not only IT, but um, the end user, whether it's consumer or an employee in a company, is going to become much more aware of what kind of information they're storing and what kind of information they're putting into the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to become a, a bigger deal, uh, and people are going to start, regular people like you and I are going to start thinking twice about this. Mm -hmm. uh, the second thing is that um, cloud adoption, cloud service adoption within enterprises is, is, is going to continue to grow. And I think this is one of the things... Um, that will actually start, it may start hitting an inflection point this year or, or later this year where uh, a lot of different enterprise grade cloud services will start being adopted because organizations have to start realizing that uh, the, the benefits of the cloud outweigh um, the negative uh, aspects of it and, and there are ways to kind of hedge against um, the negatives but in order to keep your workers productive, keep them connected, um, you need to start adopting some of these cloud services. Uh, and with so many being adopted, I think IT is going to need a way to manage all of these things. Um, so a fabric needs to be created that allows mm -hmm. them to successfully uh, manage everything in one go rather than having to manage like the 20 different services that are being used in the organization. Um, so I think APIs and platforms this year um, are going to be huge, especially those that give people the ability to develop across different cloud services um, or manage different cloud services. Yeah, no, I, I think uh, let's see earlier this last year, or, you know, late in the year, we 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 interviewed someone on uh, basically a, a company that writes scripts for enterprises, and he was saying the same thing: is that that the the challenge is really is how to manage a lot of these devices, as we just talked about earlier in security and. Um, you know, and there's there certain ways IT professionals I find out you know have gotten comfortable, like with the BlackBerry you said earlier, mm -hmm. um, on on just running their department and and knowing how to handle certain devices. But with some of these new devices and and the ability to get to the cloud um, and and use those services and not keep it as a you know <laughs> not keep your own intranet really is really mm -hmm. what they were kind of doing. It's really kind of interesting. But uh, but yeah, there's a, there's a lot of um, kind of neat. Uh, neat, neat things coming along, I, I, and and you know you may may want to talk about you know I, I think you know how, how has your company kind of worked with you know enterprises in that way and actually mm -hmm. you know uh, with your with your service. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're we're definitely seeing a lot of organizations adopting uh, Google Apps, Dropbox, Box, um, uh, Salesforce, etc. I could go on the list forever, <laughs> but um, all different kinds of cloud services are starting to be used and. Um, a lot of people, because of mobile, um, there's no longer this desktop to interact with your data, right? It's especially on iPhone. I think on Android it is a little bit easier, but on iPhone, um, if you wanted to, uh, say, create a Google Doc and then save that doc over in a Dropbox and share it with a bunch of people, uh, it's really hard to actually do that, right? Because you can't just yeah. drag data over from your Google Drive app over to your Dropbox app. Um, and, and that's where Cloudless really comes in. Right. Um, what we're building is the ability to connect different types of cloud services and get them to work really nicely with each other. Um, so our, our initial integrations have been with uh, Gmail uh, and any kind of cloud storage service that you like. Right. Um, so you're, you're able to uh, receive documents in, in your Gmail and send them directly over into whatever cloud collaboration service that you use. Um, and since email is still kind of the hub that everyone uses, and it, I, I think of it as the original cloud service, uh, it, it's been around forever that I, I don't think people consider it a cloud service because that's more of a, a new term. Um, yeah, right, right, <laughs> right. Uh, so, so we connect the original cloud service with the, the newer, trendy cloud storage services, so um, allowing you to be more productive uh, right. and use these new tools from within the inbox, which is what you're used to using. 
Right, right. No, that's great. So interesting trends. I mean, uh, you, you mentioned <laughs> um, you know mobile for consumers might might taper off in terms of smartphones, which is really interesting. Actually, um, mm -hmm. you know, you talked about um, you know mobile for business and uh, bring your own device stuff that they have to deal with on the business side and and how to how to use the cloud in that way, and then. You know, in terms of also the the cloud for consumers, just getting the ability to use those things, uh, your mobile devices with with the cloud, and 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 use less computing power on your devices is really interesting. Mm -hmm. And you know, lastly, and just getting enterprises to adopt it more um, is really kind of cool. So yeah, anyway, thank you. I, I appreciate a lot of your insights here, and it's really kind of cool to talk with you. And we'll try to do this more, huh? Yeah, so, no, thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> a lot of fun. Anyway, yeah, let's let's close off the interview and thanks for your time again and giving the Nerd Soccer audience your insights on 2014 mobile cloud trends. Um, so how can people get a hold of you and uh, get a hold of Cloudless? Yeah, uh, so feel free to email me uh, anytime. My email is e Elliot E L I O T at cloudless with a K uh, dot com. Uh, you could also visit cloudless dot com also with a K uh, to try out Cloudless for free. Yeah, great, great. Anyway, so anyway, that was uh, Elliot Sun of Cloudless. Uh, check out Cloudless, as he said, at cloudless.com. And to see more about Elliot, we ran a great interview with him. You can just search on our website, nursehawker.com, for that, and uh, where he talks about the Cloudless products in a little more detail. So anyway, thanks for joining us, everyone. Uh, this is Greg Vore, a.k.a. Social Greg, on Twitter for the Nurse Hawker Media Network, where we believe in tech, startups, design, and you. Thanks for joining us, everyone, and be careful out there. Thanks, Elliot. Appreciate it. Thanks, Greg. Okay.